Let's talk about ham radio operators. Ham radio guys, these guys love to do all kinds of amazing, crazy things. And they go out there, they put this big antenna, they got the big thing in there with this big mass, and they have concrete. And what they'll do is they'll put ground rods. I don't know if they put three or four ground rods all around that whole thing out there. And, and then what they want to do is they don't want to ground <clears throat> the cable that comes in and they don't want to ground the mass to the building. They want to keep it separate. That means that the cable coming in here is connected to this end of the earth and it goes inside and it goes into a very, very expensive piece of equipment and they wipe out their equipment. Mm -hmm. But they're thinking that, well, you know, I want to keep it separate. You don't have the lightning protection. People want to keep lightning protection terminals away from the electrical. And the sprinkler fire marshal guy, he wants to keep the sprinkler pipe away from the electrical. Well, the ham radio guys want to keep their ham radio away from the electrical. And all these people will genuinely care, and they're thinking they're doing the best thing they possibly can. So let's talk about what are you supposed to do. <clears throat> You're supposed to take that mass and connect it to where? In a system bonding terminal. You're supposed to take that cable that comes in over here, and you put it onto a ground block. And then you connect it to the inner system bonding termination. I mean, that's how it's supposed to be. Now, this is a discharge unit. That would have been for the satellite dish. Boom. Same thing on for the antenna here. And you'll have a discharge unit for the ham radio. Those guys will have the same thing. That's A1020. And here's how we connect it right here to the inner system bonding termination. Well, guys, I want to thank you for watching this video. And here's what I would suggest that you do. <clears throat> that was just an introduction to bonding and grounding. And I hope that, that you recognize that I have like so much more information I would love to tell you. But you know what? I couldn't tell you because you couldn't even understand it. So what I need you to do is go back and watch this videotape. You really need to get your code book out. I mean, we're just looking at that now. You got to get your code book out. You got to get my book out of Bonding and Grounding. You got to watch the video. You have to put it on pause. You got to get your code book and you got to read the code. Hear what Scott was saying, what different guys were saying. Look at my text, watch the video, and then underline and highlight everything. And that would be your second pass. And then you watch it a third time because now you've had some relationship with the code. See, we had an introduction kind of reviewing it. Now you watch a second time with the code book in my book. Then you watch it a third time pretty much just with your code book. And maybe you need to get my book because you're trying to try to figure it out. And now you have a book that's all kind of marred and twisted and turned and tabbed and highlighted and colored. And if somebody asks you a question, you are going to be amazing because you're going to have knowledge that almost hardly anybody in the electrical industry has.